Good morning and welcome. Our prelude this morning has a refrain that you can join us in singing, simply, Alleluia. Good morning, fellow parishioners, and welcome to St. Patrick's Parish. Thank you for joining us today as we gather to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. This Mass is being live streamed with Father Paul Shepherd presiding. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Michael McClellan, David McDonald, deceased members of the Brady and Raymond families, the intentions of Gemma O'Sullivan, and the intentions of Jack McDonald. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, let our hearts burn within us as we hear the gospel and celebrate the Eucharist. And I invite you to stand and greet one another as we begin our celebration.
Let us sing together, Alleluia, Love is Alive, number 171, in the music issue hymnal, number 171. family and friends, brothers and sisters, to our Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today we hear that although we are redeemed by the cross and resurrection, if and when we fall into sin, we have Jesus who intercedes for us. We find him here in the Eucharist that we celebrate now. Let us call upon the Lord who reconciles us to God that we might be prepared to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
sisters, let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but who does not obey his commandments is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly, in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. 
The Gospel of the Lord. What we hear in today's gospel is something we don't often think about, especially after last week's gospel that could have the subtitle of the gospel of doubting Thomas. We understand from that particular passage from scripture that Thomas doubted whether or not the Lord was actually risen from the dead. And we somehow think that he was the only one because we have the gospel of doubting Thomas. But what we hear today and recognize is that it wasn't just Thomas who doubted that Jesus had risen from the dead. All of the disciples, all of the apostles doubted whether or not he was actually alive again. What's really interesting is that this gospel passage today begins with the conclusion of last week's gospel, the gospel of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and how they recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And they left Emmaus and went back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples, we have seen the Lord. And as they were explaining all that had happened to them, behold, Jesus showed up in their midst. And it says they were scared. They were, in fact, terrified to the point that they thought they were seeing a ghost. Even the two that had been on the road to Emmaus and all others who were in that room. Jesus asked them, why do fears arise? Why do doubts arise? And I think perhaps Their fear and doubt came from seeing someone or something, as they thought, that could not possibly have been there. The suffering and torture that Jesus endured at the hands of the Romans, his death on the cross, would have left him scarred and battered and beaten and broken. And no one would ever have survived the crucifixion. So how could this person who was standing before them, looking like he did, actually be the one who they knew had died so horrible a death? So Jesus arrives and he speaks to them and tells them not to be afraid. He speaks to them those words we hear so often after the resurrection. Peace be with you. He's inviting them to let go of their fear, to let go of their anxiety, their doubts, all of those things that have been building up inside of them. And now on seeing him who stands before them, they wonder who it is. How can this be? The Jesus we knew was the carpenter from Nazareth. He worked miracles. He even walked on water. He raised the dead. He proclaimed the good news to thousands of people. How is it that he who suffered so much is now alive and in our midst? Perhaps their doubts and their fear was not so much that he was risen, but that how it could happen. How could this one who had gone through so much now be present with them? And the answer is because he is God's own son. He is God the son who is risen from the dead and stands among them now and speaks of peace. For the disciples to come to the realization that Jesus is the Son of God and not just a carpenter, a prophet, or a miracle worker, they had to come to see him in a whole new way. And this is what appeared to them in that moment when he stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. 
For Jesus had been created anew. His, res his resurrected form was different than what he had had before. He didn't look the same. Yes, he had flesh and bone, and yes, he could eat. And because of these, he proved to them that he was not a ghost. He was not a vision. He was not an apparition. He was truly standing there in a physical form in a way that could only be explained by faith and by knowing that he was God the Son who had been with them as God the Son throughout the years of their journeying, his mission and his ministry among the people. And now perhaps some of their fear was, what have we said or done while God was in our midst? How have we received him or not? Have we been good or kind and shown to our God who is with us the reverence and respect that is his due. But ultimately, Jesus brushes all of that aside and says, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Don't worry. It's me. You know me. I am with you. And I always will be with you. And he opened their minds to understand all that had been said about him in the scriptures. And he opened their minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God given to them. God, the Holy Spirit, imparted that they may know and understand all that Jesus would have them know and understand about him, about who he is, his mission, and his role among them, and how now they are to take up that mission and continue the work which he has begun. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. It is this Holy Spirit that they received on that Easter night and that we will celebrate in its fullness on Pentecost Sunday, that the young people of our parish who are with us today preparing for the Sacrament of Confirmation will receive later next month. Today we will enroll them as candidates for this sacrament, and we will pray with and for them that they will come to know who Jesus is for them, and that we will be strengthened as a community to support them in their faith journey. And we will pray with and for them today that their hearts and minds may be open to receive the Holy Spirit. We who gather here and have already received the Holy Spirit confirm us in our faith. And that Spirit is given to us to bring about peace, peace that will change our minds and hearts, affirm our faith, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he is with us and through our words, our works, our witness, he is present in the lives of others in the world today. This is our vocation in Jesus Christ as members of the church. It's what the apostles were sent into the world to do. It's what we are sent in Christ to do also to be his witness to love, to forgiveness, and to peace. A peace that the world cannot give. A peace that we can share with one another because we have received that peace into our hearts. As we receive that peace today through Christ by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we receive him who is given to us in communion. We receive the Holy Spirit in power and we receive the grace of God that we are able to be his witnesses here and everywhere according to his call, his plan, and his word for us. Today we hear the good news of our salvation, that Jesus Christ is risen, and we receive peace by the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
that we who look to the Lord may bear witness to what we have seen and we may testify to that good news. Christ is risen. He is with us. Amen. this time we will enroll the candidates for confirmation and so I invite you please to remain seated. Dear friends, today we have with us the young people of our parish who are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation. They are being enrolled as candidates for this sacrament. So now I invite the candidates to come forward and stand at the altar with their parents. Come right up here and turn and face the congregation. must say some of you are looking like the apostles at the sight of Jesus, a little frightened, a little worried. This will not hurt, I promise. Very gentle. So candidates for confirmation, dear young people of our parish, when you were baptized by water and the Holy Spirit, you became members of the Catholic Church and children of God. Now you are preparing for another sacrament as part of your journey of faith and life. We celebrate with you and we promise to pray for you as you prepare for this important sacrament. Your preparation will help you to appreciate, understand, and respond to the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit whom you will receive in fullness in confirmation. So candidates, I will now ask you to declare your commitment to be a member of the church and to receive the sacrament of confirmation by answering I am to the following question. And I just would uh, you know, suggest that when you do answer I am, try and get the gentle folks in the back row to be able to hear you. Okay? So here's your question. Are you willing to live each day as a member of God's Holy Church and to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to help you live your Catholic faith? I am. Excellent. Did you hear them? Wow. Ah, thumbs up. There you go. Parents, I now ask you to declare your willingness to accompany your child closer to Christ to the sacraments of the church by answering, I am, to this question. Are you willing to continue to witness to Christ in your lives, leading your children closer to him in the community of the church by the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you have received? Amen. Excellent. I now invite the members of our assembly to please stand because I have a question for you. Dear members of this congregation, I ask you to declare your willingness 
to pray for these children and their parents as they prepare for confirmation by answering, we are, to this question. People of St. Patrick Parish, are you willing to pray for these children and their parents, demonstrating for them the life of faith we share as members of the Catholic Church? Yeah. Excellent. And now we pray as a community for all of you. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all creation, you have made us in your image and likeness. Welcome with love those who come before you today. Help these young people, their parents and their sponsors, to open their hearts and their minds to the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Grant that we will all grow together under your guidance as faith-filled members of the Catholic Church. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The candidates for confirmation on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles, he appeared as tongues of fire. And so today, as a reminder of your enrollment and as you prepare to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we will present to each of you a candle, which when lit will have a flame to remind you of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you will receive in confirmation. So we'll present to you each a candle on your way back to your seat, and as they return to their places, let's offer them our congratulations. <laughs> Dear friends, with confidence, let us raise our prayers to God, whose desire it is for us to know His love, to receive His Spirit, and to be led by His grace to salvation. the church <coughs> excuse me that the church be unfailing in her mission to proclaim and witness to the risen Christ we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that government leaders revere the sanctity of life from the conception to natural death we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that the word of god be a source of guidance solace and peace for us and all longing for greater faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the spirit of Easter joy remain in our hearts throughout this Easter season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hospitality of this loving community welcome and comfort those who are isolated, experiencing hardships, or new to our country or community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have called us and made us your children in Christ. Hear us as we pray, and through the intercession of Jesus, your Son, grant what we ask, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing to We're Bound for Emmaus, number 167 in the Music Issue Hymnal.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Marcel our Bishop, Ivan is auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle St. Patrick and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most the body blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. The body of Christ. Since I cannot at this moment receive you Christ. sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. The body of Christ. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing number 355 in the breaking of the bread.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. We have some announcements this afternoon. Please, please join us in the uh, Monsignor Baxter Hall after Mass, um, where the Knights of Columbus have prepared coffee, tea, and sweets for us to share, participating in opportunities for fellowship, help us to create a stronger community, and allow us to welcome and meet new parishioners. Please join us for a few minutes. The ladies of the CWL are hosting a fashion show and luncheon uh, next Saturday, April 20th, from 12 to 3 p.m. in the Monsignor Baxter Parish Hall. Everyone is invited to join them for this informative and fun event. Tickets are $25 and can be purchased after weekend masses. And from the parish office, please buy your tickets by Wednesday. <clears throat> we are beginning the Faith Formation Program, Symbolon, Knowing the Faith, on Thursday, April the 25th at 7 p.m. This formed.org program helps us to understand the essentials of our faith through video and group discussions. We will meet in the Monsignor Baxter Hall for 10 weeks. The registration link can be found in the bulletin and on our website. Additional information about these and other events can be found in the Parish Bulletin and on our website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you for celebrating Eucharist today. Have a very good day and a very good week ahead. Let us sing together number 170 in the music issue hymnal, Hallelujah is our song.